30 years ago, I could not have imagined we'd be looking back at such a radical transformation. Enlace has now helped churches and communities take on huge, complex challenges like food insecurity, infant mortality, and human trafficking. It was slow at first, but today there's a backlog of 3,000 churches applying to partner with Enlace because they've seen how we can help churches end poverty in their communities. The story of how we got here is one of faithfulness, prayer, and partners like you who are willing to take a deep, responsible look at poverty and accept God's invitation to help redeem the most forgotten parts of creation. For me, that story began with my birth in El Salvador, my home, until we had to escape the Civil War. My parents were missionaries. They planted a church in downtown San Salvador, where we lived in a little urban development wedged between shanty towns. When I went outside to play soccer, it was often with kids who lived in dirt floor homes with tin roofs. Then I'd bus across town for an elite education alongside the children of diplomats, bankers, and owners of large corporations. I never had a sense of the poor as a group separate from us. But even as a child, I knew that some of my friends' poverty would result in less opportunity, poorer health, illness, and even death within their families. Then in seventh grade, civil war broke out and we had to leave, but not before God planted a little mustard seed in my heart that later take root. I returned to El Salvador for my senior year of high school, then studied culture anthropology with a focus on poverty and its alleviation. I was thrilled to discover a whole academic discipline around all the economic, psychological, social, and even spiritual dynamics of poverty. Then I met Michelle. We were counselors at a summer camp for missionary kids who'd never lived abroad. We dated through graduate school, fell in love, and got married. Next thing I knew, I was back in El Salvador designing public water projects, establishing community banks, and helping agricultural co-ops produce new products like frog legs and honey. We were doing everything right in terms of community leadership and participation. Our projects were perfect on paper, but we kept seeing that if people's hearts and relationships were not transformed and restored, those projects didn't lead to long-term change. That's when God started to challenge me. I've already got people on the ground, God said and their whole mission is to transform relationships with me and with each other. Yeah, God, I said, where are those people? That's why my church exists, God said. It was a good point, but I was a development worker, not a missionary like my parents. Michelle and I weren't yet committed to living in El Salvador. I thought I'd end up a professor in the US. Michelle had been dreaming of becoming a writer since middle school. All the writers we knew got jobs in New York, not San Salvador. We gathered some close Salvadoran friends and prayed every day, seeking God's guidance. It was soon clear to both of us that the work we were doing was too important to leave. We said to God, if you put a burden on pastors' hearts to serve their communities, we'll walk alongside them and figure it out. Suddenly we were surrounded by frustrated pastors. They had been trained in theology, church planning, evangelism, and preaching, but none of that had taught them to effectively love their neighbors. In their context, that meant feeding the hungry, giving the thirsty a drink, and healing the sick. One of our first church partners was with Pastor Victorio from the Cornerstone Church in Avelinas. The average daily income in Avelinas was 16 cents per person per day. One in three children was severely malnourished. Infant mortality was 37 per 1,000, the highest I'd ever seen. Why were so many babies dying in Avelinas? Along with the Alase team, Victorio and his church prayed, investigated, envisioned, dreamed, made a plan, and got to work. They studied their communities and began understanding the underlying problems contributing to the death of so many children. They created a plan and began to track the changes in key areas such as access to clean water, latrines, electricity, and access to primary health care. They helped their neighbors gain access to safe drinking water, and little by little, their water access maps turned from red to yellow. They built latrines, and over the years, their sanitation maps turned from red to yellow. They learned how to work with their local governments to get electricity, and their utility access maps turned from red to yellow to green. They even built their own clinic, 
Their initiative inspired the Ministry of Health to staff it with doctors, equipment, and medication. And their healthcare access maps turned from red to yellow to green. Last year, their infant mortality was zero. Not a single baby in Avelina's died because the Cornerstone Church has learned to effectively love its neighbors. And reducing infant mortality was just the first of many ways they've reflected God's love. They've since worked with their community to improve education and infrastructure. Most importantly, they help create a model other churches can apply in their own context. For most of those first 10 years, Enlace worked with just a handful of churches as we refined our model of church and community development. Over the next 10 years, we implemented that model over and over, improving it constantly as we measured the impact of churches to reduce the multiple dimensions of poverty over time. Meanwhile, I continued my academic study of poverty alleviation. A colleague from my PhD program had traced a human trafficking route from North India to Nepal, where parents were being tricked into selling their children into slavery, and asked me to visit. Tina Poon Magar is among the few women in Nepal to earn a master's degree in Christian theology. She said, if you throw human traffickers in jail, more take their place the next day. She said, if you buy kids out of slavery, they go right back in if their family can't make a living. She said that the only solution to child trafficking was sustainable, long-term, community-level social and economic transformation, and she thought Christians should be leading the way. During one of our conversations, Tina produced an academic white paper titled, The Church's Effective Agent of Community Transformation, and asked, are you this Ron that wrote the paper? One of her Bible college professors in India was using my white paper as her text for a course in community outreach. Tina wanted to use Elase's model to fight human trafficking in Nepal. Felix and Dina Orellana flew from El Salvador to Nepal to work with Tina, just as we had with Pastor Victorio and Avelines. Tina is now the executive director of Elase Nepal, where churches have created a learning center for low caste kids. They've created jobs for parents and helped children stay in school. And Tina was right. Human traffickers are powerless to prey on thriving communities. Even more importantly, previously marginalized Christians are now becoming respected leaders in their 99.9% .9 Hindu communities. When the Christians of one rural village in the Dong region built a new church, their Hindu neighbors even helped them build it. Think about that. A model for church-driven community development created by poor Salvadoran church leaders is now helping churches fight human trafficking in Nepal. There could be little doubt by now that God was orchestrating something bigger through Alasi. That little mustard seed had taken root and it was just beginning to sprout. Back in Central America, news of Alasi spread to Guatemala, where severe malnourishment was killing babies. Child welfare agencies were taking malnourished infants from their mothers. Churches wanted to help, but they didn't know how. Church leaders said, nonprofits always come to their communities, do projects, then leave, which often teaches communities that transformation comes only from the outside. Church leaders wanted to learn to transform their own communities. They wanted someone to walk next to them to overcome their obstacles someone who cares enough to witness their joy as they learn to manifest God's kingdom. If you ever have a chance to visit the church in the community of Batsun, Guatemala, you'll see walls decorated, not with religious art, but with charts tracking the weight of every severely malnourished baby in town. You'll see a church that knows in real time which neighbors need more care and people deploying that love through healthcare, education, nutritious food, prayer, and just presence with them. You'll see babies getting chubbier. You'll see moms who once ran like fugitives from police and child welfare agencies now working with churches to show authorities it's safe to keep families together. In turn, Elasa gets to learn from Mayan Christians whose ancestral and biblical love for the natural world has led to creation care programs. Pastor Eddie's missional church recently planted 14,000 trees that now prevent erosion, restore soil health, and capture drinking water in underground aquifers for the entire community. Working with Gachiquel and Tsutsuhil speaking Mayan, as well as Nepali, Salvadoran, and North American Christians, we begin to see that God has been preparing Elasit all along for a special role within a global church. Felix and Dina returned from Nepal to Dina's home country, Nicaragua, 
the second poorest in the Western Hemisphere. Once again, children were the most vulnerable, but this time God gave us a new sign. Churches lined up immediately, hundreds at first, then thousands saying, Enlace is exactly what the church needs in their country. 30 years ago, most churches we encountered seemed to feel like their work was only to convince people to profess faith in Jesus. It's not like that anymore. Churches around the world are saying yes to God's invitation to join his work of restoring all people and creation to God. And churches here in the U.S. are joining the fun. For 30 years, Enlace has been helping people like you and churches like yours partner with churches in Central America and Nepal to end poverty in their communities. We watch with joy as North American churches come alive, go on service trips, and people come home excited about their church, proud of its responsible, sustainable, empowering global impact. Over the past three decades, Enlace has perfectly and obediently created a world-class model for church and community development, and now we're at a crossroads. As we cast our vision for the next 30 years, it's plain to see that we can no longer be faithful to God's plan for us without you and more like you, a lot more, joining us in prayer and support for this vision of churches working with communities to end poverty. The number of churches applying for Enlace's partnership is now 10 times the number we've partnered with since 1993, and we can't say yes to them without you. Enlace is working with a sector of the global church where people are beating at the door to get in, and we need your help to open the door. Imagine thousands of communities like Evelina's and millions of relationships restored. Imagine all those children who should not have to die young or fall victim to human traffickers or starve. Imagine them living happy, fulfilling lives, knowing God loves them, and you do too and that they themselves can manifest God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We know how to help them manifest that vision. So please help and lastly celebrate 30 years of faithfulness with a special gift this year. Then stick around because it feels like Elasse's mustard seed faith is about to move mountains.